Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here going over mole ratio. And you do need to have your calculator and periodic table ready. So if you don't have it, please hit pause and go get it right now. First of all, let's review a little bit. What is molarity? So it's the moles of solute per liter of solution. So one molar or one capital M and oh yep, this technically should be italicized. One molar equals one mole of a solute dissolved in one liter of a solution. And the reason I started with the review is because what this unit is talking about are solutions and different ways to express their concentration. So if something is a dilute solution, that means what? Not very much of the solute. And if it's very concentrated, that means there is a lot of the solute. For example, if you have juice concentrate, that's what you buy in the freezer section of the grocery store, and you need to add some water. However, if you add too much water, then it will be dilute and not taste nearly as good. All right, so now we're going to talk about concentration can also be expressed as mole fraction. Mole fraction, make sure you write this down, equals the number of moles of one component of a solution divided by the total number of moles in the solution. The component can be either the solute or the solvent in the solution. So mathematically, it's written like this. So if I want to find the mole fraction of the solute, I take the moles of solute divided by the total moles of the solution. So how do I get total moles of the solution? I need to add up moles of solute plus moles of solvent. Now what if I wanted to find the mole fraction for solvent? Well, the mole fraction of the solvent equals the moles of solvent divided by the total moles of solution. Either way, for total moles of solution, it's the moles of solvent plus moles of solute. And mole fractions for solutes or solvents are determined by dividing by the total number of moles. So what is the unit? There's no units because there's moles on top, moles on the bottom, and they cancel. So it's just a number answer. Let's do a problem. Industrial exhaust gas contains 128 grams of sulfur dioxide dissolved in 1500 grams of carbon dioxide. What is the mole fraction of SO2? Okay, so let's start by what we're finding. We're finding the mole fraction of the SO2, and is that our solute or solvent? Well, this one would be the solute because it's dissolved in the solvent. So dissolved in the solvent. Now, usually the solvent is water, but in this case it's not. All right, so we need to use the moles of solute divided by total moles of solution. So what are we going to find first? Well, first, let's start at the top. Let's find the moles of solute. So which chemical is that again? That would be the SO2. What do we do now? Start with what you know, right? That's how we always start these problems. We start with what we know. So what do we know about SO2? How much do we have? 128 grams. Put it over 1. What unit has to be on the bottom of our next fraction? Has to be grams SO2 so that this cancels out with that, right? It's all about the canceling. And because we want to change from one unit into another, so we're going to end up canceling those units out. And what's going, what will the final unit be? What are we trying to convert grams into? We're trying to convert it into moles of SO2. And how do we convert grams into moles? Well, we know that the top of this is going to be one mole. So in one mole, I need to know how many grams of SO2 there are. So look at your periodic table, hit pause, and try and do that part by yourself. Try and remember how to do that. And here's the answer for that part. We found the molar mass of SO2. So each sulfur weighs 32.07, plus each oxygen weighs 16, but there's two of them. So 2 times 16. And the entire thing has a molar mass of 64.04 grams. So we put that in here. 64.04 grams of SO2 is the same as one mole of SO2.
And in your calculator, you would type in 128. 128 divided by, because we divide by what's on the bottom, 64.04. And if we round to hundredths, the 8 makes the 9 round up. So if we have a dollar ninety-nine and we have one more penny, what do we have? We have 2.0. And, oh, I said round to hundredths. 2.00 moles of SO2. Are we done? No because all we have found so far is the moles of solute. Now we have to find total moles of solution. What is this solution made of? It's made of SO2 and CO2. We already did the SO2, so now what do we have to find? We have to find how much CO2 we have. We have 1,500 grams, but what unit do we want the CO2 in? We don't want grams, we need to change it to moles. All right, so I kind of just shoved all this up here so we still have it. So we need to find the total moles of the solution, which would be moles of SO2 plus CO2. What do we do next? We start with what we know. So we know that we have 1,500 grams of CO2. And what's going to go on the bottom of our next fraction? Got to cancel. And what's our, the unit of our final answer going to be? So. We're putting grams of CO2 so that it cancels, and we're converting it to moles of CO2. And with my labeling, I should also have my chemical there so we can keep track of it, especially since we have two different chemicals we have to find in these kind of problems. All right, so molar mass of CO2, if you can hit pause and find that, please. And so there's one carbon plus two oxygens for a total of 44.02 grams per mole. Put that in your handy dandy calculator and make sure you do. Make sure you're putting this in your calculator so you can practice how you do it. And we get 34.04 moles of CO2. Are we done? No. What do we got to do next? Well, I have moles of solute. Which one was that? That was my SO4 divided by total moles of the solution. So what's this bottom number down here? It's not 2. It's not 34.08. What is that bottom number? What do we have to do? Total means we add. So let's add up our total moles. I put them in parentheses and it goes on the bottom of our equation. If you wanted to simplify and add these two together and so in your calculator what you're really going to put is 2 divided by 36.08. Sorry, that's crazy small. Let's make that a little bit bigger. There we go. So that's what's going to be in your calculator, or you can put it in like this and use the parentheses. And your final answer is going to be the mole fraction of SO2 equals 0 0.06. And there are no units because we had moles on the top, moles on the bottom, so they canceled. All right. That is a lot of steps. Yeah, that was like 20 slides to do one problem. Okay, and that's okay because you can do it, you just have to take one thing at a time. So start with your equation. All right, then what did we do? We found moles of solute. Okay, we started with what we knew, which was grams of SO2, divided it by how much one mole of SO2 weighs to get moles of SO2. Then we had to find moles of CO2. We start with what we know, which was 1,500 grams, divided by the molar mass, which we found on our periodic table, to convert that into moles. Then we plug everything in our equation. The moles of solute divided by our total moles. So the moles of solute plus moles of solvent. And that's it. So yeah, there are a lot of steps, but this is one of those examples where you just take it one at a time. And this is an example when I taught at brick and mortar school, I passed out markers. The reason I passed out markers is because it helps to color code things when you have this much stuff going on. So um, if you don't like color coding, that's fine. At least circle your answer up here, like step one. Okay, and then I found part two. And then I can go back up here and plug them in. So that really helps. Otherwise, you have a whole page of jumbled up numbers and it's a big mess. So it really helps too if when you organize your notes, 
just kind of add lines. Say, okay, that was the first part. All right, now I need to find this part. Okay, that was the second part. Okay, now here's where my answer. And you can just kind of divide things out in your notes. I cannot stress enough how important it is to write things down in chemistry. It's the only way your brain's going to remember these. Okay, go ahead and do the pre-quiz. Check your answers. Um, take the quiz. Check your answers to the quiz when you're done. And as always, let me know when and how I can help you along the way.